Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. It is Wendy Watson, and she is a mindset coach, and she is a spiritualist, and she has some amazing things that she wants to talk about today to help you improve your overall life. So, Wendy, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Hi, everybody, and everybody that's checking in. Nice to meet you guys. I am a spiritual advisor and entrepreneurial mindset coach. And so I just help you to find your operational intelligence. And a lot of people ask me what that is. And it's just being intelligent about how you are operating, whether that's mindset, emotional, spiritual, and getting those all in alignment with each other, your actions, your words, your emotions, to be able to manifest the goals that you're trying to reach, whether in business or in your personal life, all of those should represent your principles, and your spiritual values. Now, when you work with people, do you find that um, the first thing that's really important is that they start to change the way they think and, and, and their mindset? You know, how, how important is it to help people really focus on a healthy mindset? And what is a healthy mindset that you see people really benefiting from? Yeah. So the first step I really take my clients through is identifying what their mindset is and how they're currently operating, what's working for them, what's not working for them in order to be able to tweak the things that aren't working and to be able to rely on the things that are right. So if you have some things that are really working for you, it's really good to be able to lean on those as your strengths while you're tweaking these other things that are not working for you. Right. And so positivity, gratitude is all the fundamental aspects to me about positive mindset, positive energy, trying to manifest. If you're in that, you know, wounded ego, if you are in that depressive state or second guessing yourself, then you're not going to reach the goals that you're trying to reach because you're not clear, you're not concise, you're not intentional about it. Right. I think, you know, positivity is is so important because even if you have something negative that happens, you could always pull something positive out of the negative. You know, even if something bad happens, okay, it made me stronger. It made me, you know, learn about this, you know, and you could always, if you, if you keep focusing and turning around and focusing on the positive aspects of, you know, what, what it did for you instead of like, you know, poor me pity party type thing, it could actually help you grow and, and become a stronger person person. And you could use that knowledge, I think, to even help yourself further advance and elevate to new levels of life. Do you feel like that too? Absolutely. The more you can learn about yourself will help you to propel yourself forward into the next relationship, into the next business partnership, into the next sale or level of sales, Mm -hmm. right? So learning all about yourself and finding the gratitude. So if some, let's say you got in a car accident or whatever it is, finding the gratitude in that, Mm -hmm. okay, well, at least I got a new car and it works and it operates better, or I made some money off the settlement or, you know, what is the lesson that, that you can take from it in order to propel yourself forward instead of falling into the negativity and drawing yourself down? Exactly. Exactly. And what are some, some things that people need to start like focusing on and and start making changes in their life? Like, you know, when you're going through so much in life and and you have all these things occurring, you know, what are some of the simple things to begin with to help you start to change and, and, and better yourself as an individual? So the first thing that comes to mind, and it's the first thing that I did was figure out what I'm taking in from other people that aren't serve that isn't serving me. Yes. Right. So, and in fact, I wrote a book about it called verbal turbulence, the 70, 20, 10 rule. And what I realized is that 70% of what most people say is their own stuff, their own beliefs, their own fears, their own perspectives, whatever it is. Yes. Only 20% is a combination of that and it being directly personal to me but only 10% was actually personal to me or the conversation at hand. Yes. So how can I discern through all of that, find the 10% of nuggets that is useful to me and let the other person keep the other 90% 
so that I don't, so that I have the energy to focus on what I'm trying to accomplish mm -hmm. versus focus on trying to discern through information that doesn't serve me. I find that a lot too. I find that people, you know, when they're unsure of themselves or they're, they're unsure of the situation they're in, they ask, you know, a bunch of people about all their opinion, what should they should do? What should they should do? And that, da, da, da. but then, like you said, everybody has their own opinion and it's going to apply to their own lifestyle and their own experiences in life. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that person's you know, opinion is a good opinion because, you know, depending on, you know, their life and their beliefs, it may not apply to you because everybody is different. Everyone has different needs, you know, and by listening to so many different people, you can get very confused and it could also put you on a very bad path, depending on who you're talking to and what the advice they're given and really what's going on with them as a person too. I mean, that can put you into analysis paralysis, mm -hmm. which is, not a very fun place to be because then you become very indecisive. And so what I help people to do, what I love to train people how to do is to tune into their inner wisdom, whatever you call it, intuition, higher self, God speaking to you, whatever phrase that you use or just inner wisdom. Yes. Is how can you tune into your inner wisdom based off your path and your perspective and the goals that you're meant to learn in this life yeah. so that you can make the decisions that you need to make for your unique situation, your unique exactly. journey. Exactly. Stop taking stuff in from other people. They don't know you. They may know you, but they don't know you. Exactly. How can they know you if you don't know yourself? Right. Let's get you in tune with yourself so that you can make decisions within yourself. Mm -hmm. And then that will stem outwards and will help you create better relationships, more fulfilling, deeper relationships, rather than always seeking advice from the external world that doesn't know what your path is. Exactly. Exactly. And a lot of times people don't even know what their pathway is. They're kind of confused on, you know, what their, their purpose in life is, you know, and so for so many years, you know, either whether it's low self-esteem or going through traumatic events in their life, you know, they, they want something better, but they don't know what that better thing is. And they kind of, they get lost in, in, in the, in, in the trap, in the kind of, in, in the, in the pathway, because someone saying, oh, you should do this. You're so good at this. And, oh, you should do this. Well, what do you want to do? What, you know, what is your goal? What is your passion? You know, what's your purpose in life? And a lot of times if you, if you, you know, I've noticed when I've asked people, I said, you know, if you took away all the labelisms as wife or as professional, you know, or, or you, you take all those, those labels away from you, who are you as a person? And a lot of times I'll get these blank stares. They don't know who they are. You know, if yeah. you take away all the labelisms, you know, of who they are, they don't know who the real person inside is. Yes. And so what I love to walk people through kind of like the vision boards or the manifestation boards, I call it a self-empowerment board. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, take away all of those labels that other people have given you search within yourself. How would you describe yourself? And then create an, a self-empowerment board, right? Get a poster board and put all of those adjectives on there and some pictures that represent those adjectives and put it up somewhere on a wall and be like, this is, this is me. This is who I am. Yes. And this is how I define myself. Right. And when you can have that up and like create it yourself, but then walk by it every day. Yeah. It is so empowering. It is so uplifting and it really helps you to take leadership and accountability for yourself. Right. To present people, present yourself, be like, no, this is who I am, whether you like it or not, this is who I am. And like, how can we be in relationship with each other? Right. Exactly. Exactly. And when it comes to spirituality, like what are the best ways to really connect with yourself? Because, you know, so many people, you know, they don't understand how to connect with themselves. You know, they are kind of in the gray box, I call it, and they don't really know how to really go within themselves and figure out 
who that person is, you know, how do I connect with my intuition? You know, what am I feeling inside? You know, what repressed emotions do I have? You know, what are some suggestions that you have? Yeah. So the first thing that I usually walk people through is just breathing, mm -hmm. right? Slowing down your breath to where you really get calm. Right. And then focus on the body, right? Focus on the body first, right? You can't go real deep until mm -hmm. you can at least start superficially. Yes. So get, like, how does your skin feel? Do you feel the blood vessels going in and, you know, flowing through your veins? What does your hair feel like? What are your cheeks feel, right? All the different things. Like, how does your body feel? Do you feel the air contract, you know, going in and out of your lungs? Do you feel the muscles contracting in your lungs as it breathes, right? <clears throat> Once you can get there, then we can guide you to get in a little bit deeper. Yes. And what I've noticed is having a particular thing that you want to connect with. Mm -hmm. Right. So knowing what your journey is, right? So if you go on vacation, first you have to figure out where you're going. Yeah. Are you going to Italy or are you going to South America? Like mm -hmm. There's a big difference, right? Right. So are you getting in touch with your ego? Are you getting in touch with your spirit? Are you getting in touch with your inner heart? Mm -hmm. What, where exactly do you want to go? And identifying that and then asking it to present itself. Right. Right. Because in a relationship, you both have, it's best if you are both making an effort. Yes. If one person has to do, a, if one side of the relationship has to do a hundred percent of the work, yeah, it's yeah. really exhausting and it's really hard. Yeah. So if you can help yourself out by saying, Hey spirit, will you please present yourself? What do you look like? What do you feel like? Are you female? Are you male? Are you binary? Are you, you know, are you just a black figure or just a sparkly white figure? Like, all of these things like what do you look like and let's meet in the middle mm -hmm. I'm trying to connect with you but if you could also present yourself and meet me halfway that usually helps people to kind of get in touch with their inner selves with their spirits so so when you when you have breathing exercises do you also incorporate meditation are there other ways that people can actually work on themselves at home that you find very beneficial yeah, I mean, music, a, a lot of times music, a certain type of music will help that person get into a, a little bit of a deeper state mm -hmm. because it's a sound that will distract the mind from the thoughts. Yes. Right, so find something, and this is what I find most people, they get distracted by all the thoughts. Oh yeah. my gosh, I haven't made dinner yet. Oh, the baby needs to be fed. Oh, I didn't send this email or whatever it is. Right. As trying to quiet the mind. The first step I took for that, the imagery that worked for me was to imagine a file cabinet, mm -hmm. open the drawer, put that thought in the file cabinet and close the door. Right. Like, I honor you. I respect you, but I need you to wait until right. I'm done with my meditation. Yes. Like I acknowledge that you're there. Right. And just set yourself up. It, don't do the meditation at six o'clock when you know that you're going to, that you generally eat dinner around six right. or seven because you're going to be super distracted. Right. Mm -hmm. Find the best time for you in the day, whether that's first thing in the morning, last thing at night. Some people love to do it at lunch in order to yes. reach their focus for the second half of the day, whatever that looks like. Find the time. Find something that will help you to find some sort of imagery, like the filing cabinet, that will help you to hold the thoughts for another time. Yes. Or find some sort of sound like binaural beats, um, guitar riffs, uh, classical music. Maybe it's reggae. I have no idea. Like find some music that will help distract the thoughts from coming in yes. so that you can stay within a little bit longer. But it's all about practice. Like nobody's perfect at meditation. 
let the ego go aside and just mm -hmm. be like, okay, I'm going to try it for, you know, I always tell people start with five minutes. Yes. It's not a big commitment. You won't feel overwhelmed by like, oh my gosh, I got to set aside two hours. Oh, uh, yeah. right. Start with five minutes. If you can do five minutes, then you can do 10. Right. Once you can do 10, then you can do 15. Right. And just don't put any expectations on it. Right. In it for as long as you need to stay in it. And when you come out, you come out. Right. Right. And then if you need to do it again later or another day, then do it again later or another day. Like I think a lot of people put expectations and pressure on meditation, which is the opposite of the point of meditation. Exactly. So if you could just set the expectations aside and just accept the experience for what it is, for what you need on that particular day or what you're able to give yes. on that particular day to yourself. Mm -hmm. and don't put any pressure on it right. then the meditation will come so much easier I agree I agree I think it's really important for people to get in, in touch with themselves I, I feel like so many people you know don't know who they are you know or they've been told who they are you know by others you know and you know and and sometimes even the, their spouses or their partners you know they are you know they are they are told that you know this is this is who you are this is what you need to do da 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 da, da, da. and you guys you know i see a lot of couples there's always one following the other one and that one becomes you know and then that one doesn't really know who they are they've been pleasing the other person for so long that they forgot to please themselves. They forget that self-love, that self-care, putting themselves on a pedestal. Because really, how could you help yourself if you if you're so if you you know how can you help others? I mean, if you can't help yourself first, you know exactly. And how can you be of service to others if you're not in service to yourself? You cannot be the person that your husband or your wife or your business partner or your child needs if you are not truly your authentic self and right. operating from within and taking care of yourself yes what i hear a lot from parents is that they get overwhelmed from work or they get overwhelmed by a client and then they come home and they lash out on their kids because their kids are like hey by the way i have a cowboy prom in two days and now we got to set up for that and Told, right or 200 cupcakes for class or whatever it is yeah unexpected and you're already overwhelmed and then they end up lashing out and then they figure out the problem and then when they go to bed and they're reflecting on their day they feel terrible about how they treated their kid and then they self-punish and it's this perpetuating cycle yes you're taking care of yourself and doing the self-care and operating within yourself, then you'll have the wherewithal, the energy, the spiritual intelligence, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. to be able to handle those unexpected moments right. better mm -hmm. so that you're not lashing out on your kids, so that you're not punishing yourself later. Right. And then you're like, oh, is this really the experience my kid is going to have with me? Yeah. How can you lead yourself to do the self-care so that you're a better parent, so that you're a better business partner, so that you're making more money? Right. All the things that you want to do. Yes. But also be the caregiver that they deserve. Exactly. Yeah. Do you like journaling? Do you find that journaling is very helpful for individuals? I feel certain um, personality types are great for journaling. Um, most people can journal. I, I feel like there's certain personality types that are better doing other things, other mm -hmm. tasks. Um, and another thing that I want to say about meditation is that meditation comes in multiple forms. Yes. One of my clients' forms of meditation is long-range target shooting. Mm -hmm. Because in order to be able to focus on his target that's 300 yards away or whatever it is, yeah, yeah. Know, but, um, he has to slow down his breathing. 
Right. He has to shut out every, all the outside world in order to focus on that one target mm -hmm. in order to be able to hit it. And so, and I use that as an example because gardening can be meditative. Yes. Whatever helps you to shut out the world, all the noise, all the thoughts, all the things. Yes. And really get in touch with yourself. So whether that's gardening, long range shooting, uh, surfing, right, whatever activity that is, mm -hmm. or if it's just a seated breathing type of meditation. Um, I just wanted to make that point real quick. Yeah. As far as journaling, I know that it helps a lot of people more women than men because women have a lot more going on up here. Yeah. Um, I know men use it a lot too. Like I've gone to business conferences and women have like one page of notes and men have like 10 pages of notes. Mm -hmm. Right. So what I notice is that most men internalize. Yes. So for them to be able to get it out, it's really important as a uh, challenging. Right. Exercise it's really important for them to communicate that and journal it. For women, it's really more about um, concise, you know, being more concise, how to yes. narrow it down, because we have all these thoughts going on over here. So how can we narrow it down, right? So sometimes we have to write it all out. Yeah. In order to be, able to be like, oh, there's the root of the thing right down there at the bottom. So how, you know, how can we funnel it? Yes all of these things that so I think it kind of depends on the person right personality and the kind of their profile right and when people are changing their mindset and they're 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 focusing on improving their weaknesses and they're and they're working on making their strengths even stronger and you know is there a process that comes after when you change your mindset and you start working on you know connecting with your spirituality do you find also that people have to start working on their self esteem because they've lacked it because it's gotten hurt over the course of the over, over the years do you do you find that many of your clients struggle with self esteem issues yeah cuz there's a lot of trauma and and i don't mean like major trauma like rape and divorce and all that stuff you know even for me though I had a I had a trauma from when I was two years old and I was just tired of my parents arguing and I was trying to yell at them to stop arguing right. that was a trauma that affected the rest of my life until I worked on that right right and it it prevented me from being able to stand up for myself to be able to confront conflict so as we deal with the mindset and the emotional work, the self-esteem and the ego mm -hmm. are, I kind of combine it all. Okay. Right. All into one. Because in order to change the mindset, you have to have the confidence to be able to change it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. You have the, you have to be able to have the confidence and the discipline to do the homework in yeah. order to get you there. If you're, if you're in fear of the future, if you have anxiety, mm -hmm. which is anxiety is fear of the future. It means that you're not living in the present. If you have fear of what you could become or what the change could look like, then you're not going to do the homework. Right. You're not going to do all the things. So how can we uplift your self-esteem enough to at least get you to do the homework and then the homework will then help you to further improve your self-esteem. Yes. It's where the, the self-empowerment board comes in from that we talked about earlier. Yeah. One of the things that I love to start out with is a self-empowerment board. So it's a lot similar to a vision board or a manifestation board or, you know, a vision board, like a lot of people call it. I call it a self-empowerment board. Mm-hmm. Aside from all the things that other people have labeled you, how do you describe yourself? Right. And then on that board, make it all pretty and beautiful and all the things and put all of those adjectives and pictures that represent the adjectives up on the self-empowerment board and put it up on your wall and yeah. be like, this is who I am because you described yourself for yourself. Right. And that alone will help you 
with self-esteem, with self-awareness, self-leadership, all of those amazing skills. Yeah. And by doing that, you'll change the mindset and the emotions and the trauma. I think that's wonderful. I think, you know, so many people struggle with the fear of the future. Like, who are they? You know, like the fear of change, you know, who will I become? You know, I've seen so many people live in the past because they're afraid of what, what, if they change in the present, what lies ahead of in the future, you know, and they just, they just, tend to live in the past like like they're still you know in the in the past decades you know and they don't want to move forward they fear it you know but for people who are actually you know willing to make that change you know it's 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 a remarkable feeling because when when you start doing that homework and you start with that empowerment board and you start making those changes and you start realizing who you are then you have an identity and once you have that identity then you're able to really understand who the real person you are. You know, you can look in the mirror and you really, you for the first time, you realize I am so-and-so and I, you know, and this is what I am. And, and then you're able to, you know, really, you know, have some closure in a sense, I think. Yeah. And it really helps you to feel safe mm -hmm. with who you are, right? That's usually the next stage that I move into is how can we create an environment to where you feel safe being who you are right within yourself yeah right so the confidence has to come first and then you have to especially for women safety is the number one thing that women look for that yes. women need as a survivalist tool mm -hmm. so how can we create an environment whether it's your home environment or whatever where you feel safe being yourself. Right. So the confidence, then the safety, then leads to everything else. Right, right. And, and I, I think, you know, it's it's natural for f females to feel they need that need for safety. You know, um, it's just, it, it's it's in our blood. You know, it's, it's like, you're, you know, it's it's the way we are upbringing and and you know if, and watching our mothers take care of us and watching you know if you're a mother you know making everybody feel safe and protecting everybody you know it's just it's something that's embedded in our in, in our in our bodies you know it's the behavioral of, of wanting to feel safe make others around us feel safe is just there yeah so what you know whether that's choosing who you allow in your home whether it's changing the energy, feng shui, whatever you want to call it, right? Setting the tone for your home is where I feel like it starts first, right? Yeah. Just like the ambiance of a restaurant. When you go into the restaurant and you're like, oh, I love the ambiance here, right? What is the ambiance of your home? Yeah. If the ambiance is chaotic and turmoil, nobody's going to feel safe. Right. 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 So how can we adjust the energy of the home or the colors or the, you know, the empowerment for the altar, the yeah. whatever it is, the gym, right? Mm -hmm. Some people love it like having a home gym. Yeah. Like how can we set that up to where you at least feel safe in your home? Right. And then we'll give you tools on how to feel safe outside the home. I love feng shui and a lot of people don't understand it, but maybe you could explain it a little bit because it's, it's remarkable. People talk about it all the time. People have been, you know, have practiced it and said that it's changed their life completely. You know, once they started practicing it, once they started making changes in their home and started doing things differently and placing things differently, they just felt a different energy and things started to just get better for them. Maybe you can just like briefly go over what feng shui is, because I don't think a lot of people know exactly what it is. Like, you know, there are a lot of spiritualists that understand it, you know, but pe not a lot of people don't know the concept of it. Okay. So, and that's pretty much all that I know is like the concept of it. I'm not like yeah, yeah. an expert by any means. So basically in a very loose term, because I don't want any, I don't want to offend any traditional feng shui <laughs> out there um but basically it's about setting the energy 
of your room, of your home, whether it's colors, whether it's north, south, east, west direction, whether it's um, plants or you know, whatever that is, right? So I have a lot of calming colors in my home. So yeah. a lot of off-whites, eggplant purples, soft teals, things that are soft and soothing mm -hmm. for me, right. right? Colors have a big thing to do with energy. Yes. Right. When you see red, red is usually they're associated with love or anger. Yeah. But it could depend on the shade of the red. Right. Right. Um, white is usually very sterile, pure, right? So what colors are you using that are jiving with your aura, your energy, your spirit that will help you to feel calm? Blue is is usually another very calming color. Right. So browns and other neutral colors, right? So being very intentional about the colors, about the layout of your home, do you have space to move? Right. You have space to walk around or are you having to turn sideways in order to get around the furniture? Yeah. Right. Is it one of the things that I did, right? Because when I moved to Denver, one of the things I wanted was to be able to create a space for people to come over and to have fun. So I put um, three, so you can't see it because of my background, but I have three signs up here that say laugh, gather, and party. Mm -hmm. right? So what is the ambiance of the home that you want to create and use the decor, use the colors, use the type of furniture, right? Mm -hmm. If I want to create a party atmosphere where we can have game night and stuff, I'm not going to get a love seat, <laughs> right? I'm going to get a bigger sofa. Yeah. That has, you know, a sectional sofa where I can fit like eight or 10 people on it, right? Right. So just being very intentional about how, what kind of a create space you're creating right that's what i consider that's like the loose idea of feng shui yeah and there is a, an author her name is marie diamond and she's very big into feng shui so if people want to learn more about feng shui and they're curious from what you just said that she is actually a very good author who describes it in, in, in detail and she's really good at that now speaking of authors i you know you have written a book i want to learn more about what your book is about so tell us a little about your book and what what it contains yeah so it's all about verbal turbulence right um, cause who doesn't have verbal turbulence going on up here? Right. Um, and it's basically my journey on communication, you know, as a child of divorce, I was very angry mm -hmm. on top of that. My mom felt so guilty that she spoiled us. Right. So that led to very, um, contentious relationships Yeah, and, yeah. and, and chaotic communication and my, audit manager gave me this 70 20 10 rule one day in accounting and he's just like you know as long as 70 percent of the invoices go through fine 20 percent get escalated and 10 we have to write off and i was just like even the concept of having 10 percent that we can write off yes was like the biggest game changer for me because i was a perfectionist mm. what is that 10 percent of grace that we can give ourselves right Right. If we get 70% of our tasks done, 20% we got started, and then 10% yeah. we wait till tomorrow. Right. right. What is that 10% of great? So it's all about communication. And, and as I explained earlier, the 70% of what you're taking in from people versus finding the 10% of nuggets. Yeah. But also, how are you communicating within yourself? And how are you communicating externally? Right. Right. There's different forms of communication. There's the receiving, there's the sending, and then there's the internal. Yeah. And it's really just a rule of thumb to bring yourself, bring awareness to yourself on how you're communicating in all three of those functions. Yeah. So that you can be, because when I first started looking at how I communicated with myself, holy crap, I didn't like what I heard. And I don't know too many people that, that wouldn't agree with that. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. And if yeah. that's, if we're not communicating nicely with ourselves, 
that bleeds out. However, we are communicating within ourselves bleeds outwards. Yes, it does. So is that really how we want to talk to our parents? Is that really how we want to talk to our kids? Yeah. It stems from the inside. Yes. Right. So mm-hmm. how are, and what, and I include tips in there on things that I use in order to change my internal communication, right. which change my external communication. And then I use it in business metrics and a few other ways that it's just like a good rule of thumb, right? Yeah. If 70% of your employees are productive, happy employees, 20% are in the needs improvement mm-hmm. and 10% are your new hires and buyers. Yeah. That's a pretty successful employee retention rate. Right. If you don't follow in that model, mm-hmm. you might want to consider re-evaluating your processes and your procedures and who's hiring and you know how you're hiring and all that all of that kind of stuff so it's really about quantifying communication quantifying harmony if you Mm -hmm. will if there's a way to quantify harmony you know if 70 percent of your life is going well right if 20 percent is in the needs improvement and 10 percent is on a wish list or something that's pretty successful. Right. Right. And, but what we have a tendency of doing is fun is focusing on the 10% of negative. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have the 70% to 90% that's going really well over here. Yeah. So true. So if we could just get back to focus, okay, what's really going well, Mm -hmm. how much of my life is going well. If you're, if 70% of your life is not going well, you might need to make some changes. Right. Exactly. Change who you're hanging around with, change your mindset, change your emotions, whatever it is, you might need to make some changes if it doesn't fall within that guideline. Right. And you provide steps in your book, I assume, and how you can get to that point where, you know, things are aligned in a, in a way that you can live a productive life and be happy, you know, and Cause I, I feel like, you know, so many people strive for perfection and perfection doesn't exist, you know, but in their heads, you know, they have this conception of what perfection is, but in reality, there is no such thing as perfection. You know, there is no such thing as perfection. Nothing is ever perfect because everything is always changing and evolving. Yes. Once you, once you think you've reached perfect universe says, okay, time to change. <laughs> right it's gonna change it's gonna throw yeah. something at you that's gonna throw you off of that and then you're like right. my life's not perfect anymore yeah perfect is is whatever you create that to be yeah so for me perfect means that i'm always learning and growing and evolving and trying something new and experiencing life that to me is perfect yes and perfect is messy life <laughs> is messy yes it is. I don't want a perfectly clean, pristine, because then you're not experiencing anything. Exactly. Exactly. And when it comes to communication, have you ever found that many people or some people, like they don't realize when they're externally communicating with other people that they're not coming across productively because, you know, to them it's norm because this is the way either they grew up or this is the surrounding they've been in, or they have those repressed emotions and they're just coming out and they're coming out the wrong way, or they're said the wrong way, or their tone is the wrong way. And even though they might not, they might not mean to be negative or they may not want to be, you know, hurtful in any way, they come across at, in a completely different manner than they think they are in reality. Oh my gosh. If that wasn't the biggest lesson for me, (laughs) (laughs) I literally felt like in order for me to speak my voice, I had to say it exactly how I thought it. Right. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work well. (laughs) (laughs) It does not work well. You offend a lot of people that way and you hurt a lot of people's feelings. Yeah. So one of the things that I learned to do was to just sit and sit and wait and be like, do I like that response? Yeah. Let the response come forward. Do I like it? I don't like it. Delete and then wait for the next one to come in 
do I like that one? And sometimes it would be like the second or third thought process that came through. Right. Sometimes it would be the 10th or the 15th. Yeah. Right. But it's all about being patient with yourself to wait for the right response, not reaction. Yeah. A lot of people just fall into the habitual reaction. Mm -hmm. Right. So a lot of the times it's just like, okay, I'm not going to react. I'm going to take some time and I'm going to just let it sink in and be patient and then just wait for the right response to come through that I want to choose. Yes. And I think that's like the biggest thing, especially these days when we're used to information just being ready on the go. And then we have like this pressure to respond or to react to people and very quickly. And if we just take the pressure off, Mm-hmm. that's like the big I think that's like the number one thing is just take the pressure off of yourself right and be patient and wait for the right response to come through yes I think that's excellent advice because I see so many people that's what they do they respond and they react right away and they end up hurting other people's feelings or and they get or they get the, the wrong message you know stated across and so that is a good way maybe take a deep breath like you mentioned earlier you know slow down your breathing calm down think about the situation think about the thoughts that were going through your head and then figuring out a way that you could get your message across where it's productive and you're not hurting the other individual's feelings yeah and a good way to do that is just a smile yeah you know, it takes, it only takes four muscles to frown, but it takes eight muscles to smile. Oh, really? Simply smiling. So it takes more effort to be happy. Like, <laughs> physiologically speaking. Yeah. But it produces all the happy hormones, all right. the dopamines, all the, all the ishy gushy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're, if you're struggling at coming up with a response, right. Just smile. Yeah. Produce all the happy stuff that's yeah. going to change your mindset. Right. Even if it feels awkward. Yeah. Or even if, you know, you're at a table of four or five people and they're not smiling and you are, and it's kind of seems a little weird, just go with it because it'll right. automatically change your mindset and it'll change your words and it'll, it'll change how you respond. Right. I like that. I like that a lot. Now in your practice, like what type of services do you provide for clients? Uh, so I provide verbal coaching, whatever, whatever that consists of, whether it's emotional mindset, coaching you into a meditation, coaching you into a journey, whatever that looks like um, within the verbal coaching and then the energy healing, mm-hmm. right? So our energy records everything that we interact with throughout our whole life down to yes. every particle. Mm-hmm. So if we don't remove the stuff that no longer serves us in order to create space for new energy and new records to come in, or just to be able to create space for your energy to breathe. Yes. Then we get combobulated, right? Just yes. like, so I like to describe it as our freeway system, mm-hmm. right? The more cars on the freeway, the more you're going to get a traffic jam, the more yeah. likely you're going to get in a car accident that's really going to cause a traffic jam. Yeah. Right. So sometimes we just need to clear the cars off the freeway and clear out the energy that no longer serves us to be able to think more clearly, to be able to operate more clearly and just have some room to breathe. And the the final piece is the meditation. So I partnered with a trained monk in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. So we, we go through the verbal stuff to bring everything up to the surface then yes. we clear out the energy and then we solidify every the growth of that week with the meditation i like that a lot now for your book and like where can people find your book on amazon excellent excellent and paper have- or kindle <laughs> And where, um, what's your website address if people want to go to you? It's TBR, just like it shows up here, TBR, okay. uh, to be revealed. 
I like that. that stands for uh, spiritualhealth.com. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's awesome. And are you on any social networks that people can find you on? I'm on all of them. So <laughs> Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. I have a show uh, called To Be Revealed with Wendy Watson that I do every three weeks that's up on YouTube. And I just have a conversation with people on what spirituality means to them. Yeah. What their spiritual journey has looked like, because to me, there's an infinite number of ways that spirituality can be defined and it's oh, a yeah. very personal journey. And so I just want to showcase that and know that, you know, have people know that they're not alone on whatever their sp spiritual journey is. Exactly. And if you had to emphasize on all the things we touched base on today, what would be some things that you want the listeners to um, really understand? That you're loved, that you deserve everything that you want to accomplish, that you want to reach, that you want to manifest, the goals that you want to reach, you deserve them. Yes. Don't let somebody else turn down your light or turn down your energy. Don't, you know, own it. Mm -hmm. And just be your most authentic, brilliant self because that's what this universe needs. That's what yes. you need in order to feel spiritually fulfilled. Um, and yeah, don't let anybody ever dim your light. Right. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love how you said that. Don't let anyone ever dim your light. I like that a lot. Wow. Mm -hmm. This has been amazing. Thank you so much, Wendy, for coming on this show. I really enjoyed having you on and I hope you'll come back and we could talk some more and maybe dive deeper into some of these topics because I think, you know, a lot of people can benefit from, you know, releasing that negative energy and really cleansing their mind and being able to focus and, and change their mindset. And then really, you know, being honest with themselves. And like you said, looking at the things that really need to be tweaked about and, and don't look at it as a bad thing, but look at it as a way that you can improve and elevate to new levels in life. So you could become the person you want to be, you know? So I think, I think today's session was great. I love everything you had to say. And thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been wonderful. Yeah, thank you for having me. This has been a great conversation back and forth. I love your insights too. So yeah, thank you so much for having me on the show. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. Yeah, you too.